It's not easy when the road is your driver in listening to uh, this song by Leo Sayer. And uh, I've been thinking a lot about narcissism. It's been a reflection of mine through through much of my life. That what, is, what is narcissism? When you, it's when you're convinced that only your feelings are real. That, you know, when you have foibles and when you do hurtful things, well, they're just like cute and innocent, but when other people do anything to hurt you, then they're, they're horrible. So throughout my life, I've had my narcissism interrupted by periodic tides of empathy. I'd suddenly see things as they really were for those around me, and I'd see how I was doing things that were unnecessarily hurting others and myself. I'd see how in some ways I'd been heading down a wrong path for days or weeks or months or years. I'd get these like lightning flashes of clarity. I guess they were a combination of feelings and thoughts and they'd leave me quite ashamed. So when I'd feel things as others felt them, when they experienced my behavior and my words, I'd feel horrible, I'd feel ashamed, I'd determined to change my ways and sometimes I would change and sometimes I'd do the hard work to make myself a better person, but I hated those bouts of shame. I hated them so much that I think I kept myself away from empathizing with others too much. I just told myself to keep my eye on the prize of accomplishment and to hunker down and to keep pushing myself forward. Empathy and shame, they've run together for much of my life. It's kind of like, it's not easy when the road is your driver rather than yourself. I'm not so locked and loaded now in my body and in my thinking and in my feeling. I'm not hunkering down as much. Thanks to Alexander Technique and psychotherapy, I'm trying to come back to poise and to length and to width in my body. So when I soften my neck, inevitably soften my face as well. So I don't have as many postures, you know, I features anymore. I'm more true to the moment. So I'm softer and more tranquil compared to how I was before Alexander Technique. I used to tell myself, oh, I've got to accomplish this task no matter what, the cost to myself or to others. That's end gaining, sewing so ends at no matter the cost of achieving them. I had bosses who used to tell me that I'm very prone to tunnel vision. I hope that I'm more flexible today. So if I'd never gotten sick with chronic fatigue syndrome in 1988, I'd have a much more conventionally successful life today. Probably be an economics professor, but my soul would still have that large hole in it that I'd be trying to fill with career accomplishments. Because I've flamed out so often over the past 22 years with the chronic fatigue syndrome, the synagogue expulsions, the romantic losses, the financial struggles, the loss of friends and community, constant health issues. I've had to keep facing that what I'm doing is not working, that I have to change. So I have to explore trying things that are not comfortable for me, such as trying a new rabbi, a new shul, psychotherapy, yoga, Alexander Technique, acupuncture, a new acting teacher, a new writing teacher, a new girlfriend, a new community. So some of these new things I've been trying are working for me.